The NBA is built off of its superstars. You have those players like Jokic, Giannis, Joel Embiid, Shea Gildas Alexander, LeBron. I mean, the list goes on. But there always seems to be this one player that is left off of those lists, or at least off of the young rising star, rising talent lists. With that being De'Aaron Fox. You could argue that De'Aaron Fox was in these conversations last year, but the way this man has improved this year, there is no doubt in my mind he should be getting a lot more attention than what he is currently receiving. But when talking about last year, it's not like he didn't get any recognition for his work. I mean, the guy was an all-star, all-NBA, first ever player to win the Clutch Player of the Year award. He also got a ton of attention for being the guy to carry the Sacramento Kings to the playoffs for the first time in 16 years, which that is also one of the reasons why he doesn't get any recognition this year. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video, because like what I said before, De'Aaron Fox was a star last year. There is no doubt about that, but there were still some things that he had to work on to maybe reach that next level of stardom. Because let's be honest, there were some weaknesses, like the fact he was only really reliable in the mid-range and paint. He had no three-point shot. And to be honest, his three-point shot was never, ever really reliable in the NBA, but it was never something that people really cared about. When you had someone like Buddy Heald on your team for so long, he was the guy that was taking all the shots, so De'Aaron Fox was really allowed to go in the paint and play his game. But when you're starting to become the star player for a franchise, especially a star point guard, you need to learn how to be a three-point shooter. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and become Steph Curry and break all sorts of three-pointer records, but you need to be able to be somewhat of a threat. You cannot be sitting there being guarded like 2022 Russell Westbrook. So yeah, many would say that his three-point shot was a weakness or at least something that he had to add on later into his game. And on the smaller note, something not as serious, there were some people saying that his defense was lacking. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's a cone on defense or anything like that, but when you're on a team with Mike Brown and Jordy Fernandez as your coaching staff, they are two coaches that really value defense and they're going to do whatever they can to make you a better defender. So yeah, it was kind of known that his weaknesses were defense, kind of, and his three-point shooting. But during this year's offseason. Fox didn't go out and work on the things he was already good at. He didn't go out and practice his dunk package or certain layups or shooting mid-range pull-up shots. No, he did none of that. He went and worked on that three-point shot. Now, really quickly, as a Kings fan, I would love to personally thank Luke Locks for this work. For those who are not familiar, he is the guy that was helping De'Aaron Fox all offseason with his shot and is the reason why De'Aaron Fox is finally an efficient shooter. And I'm not saying that De'Aaron Fox is just shooting a little bit better and like, oh, his percentage went up a little bit. No. This man is shooting 40% from three while shooting four more attempts than what he shot last year. Yes, that is how insane he has jumped up in his three-point shooting. In case you need a little bit more of clarification, I will be showing you up on the screen right now his 2022 shooting compared to this year's shooting. This jump is just unheard of. And for everyone to say that De'Aaron Fox has to go out and work on his three-point shot, for him to actually go and do that is the reason why someone like Mike Brown says that he will eventually be an MVP in this league. Because he isn't complacent. He knows that if he just goes and works on the same stuff he's already good at, he will get nowhere in the league, which is why he also went and worked out on his defense. Now, I'm not saying De'Aaron Fox has turned into 2016 Matthew Della Vadova, but I will say it has gotten better and is very clear that it is something he has been working on. And when you're the star player for a team, if you are a guard working on defense, which is arguably the least cared about thing as a guard, you're telling me that other players on your team will not pick up on that. For example, Keegan Murray was working out with De'Aaron Fox all offseason, and we have seen Keegan Murray's defense jump significantly. Now, I'm not going to say that's all because of De'Aaron Fox, but I think it is a little bit of a push seeing the rest of your teammates working on their defense, especially your star player on the team working on their defense. But De'Aaron Fox isn't playing the same type of basketball he was last year, right? It's not like his three-point percentage just got a little bit better, or he's a little bit better in defense, and I think he should be in MVP conversations because of that. No. De'Aaron Fox is averaging 30 points per game. Now, I don't want to be the guy that says, oh, if they're scoring 30 points per game, they have to be on the MVP ladder. No, no, no. That's not where we're going with this. But please bear with me and look at the correlation between the highest point scorers per game in the NBA and the current MVP ladder. When looking at the highest point scorer per game, you have number one being Joel Embiid, which is very clearly the number one candidate in the MVP race. I'm pretty sure we all know that he will actually be the one to win MVP this year. Next up on the points average, you have Luka Doncic, who is currently sitting fifth in the MVP race. You then have Shea Gildas Alexander, who is third in the MVP race. Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is fourth in the MVP race. And then next up on the point averages, you have De'Aaron Fox, who is nowhere to be seen in the top 10. He is nowhere in the top 10 for MVP race this year, which is something I pray changes because it is ridiculous the disrespect this guy has been getting all year, all of his career, to be honest. Now, just hear me out. This isn't me saying that I think De'Aaron Fox should be MVP over Joel Embiid because like I said, 
said before, Joel Embiid or Jokic or Giannis, whoever it is in the top three is really going to be the one that ends up winning this award. But my point is, how is someone this good, this improved, leading a playoff contending team, not even in the top 10? Or matter of fact, not getting any attention from any media at all. I just, I don't understand that. For example, if we go back to the MVP ladder and look at someone like Damian Lillard, and I'm not trying to be a stat watcher here, but we're going to compare their stats side by side. Now, it's very clear that on the screen, one player is better than the other. But let's not just look at their numbers. Let's also look at their situations. Damian Lillard and De'Aaron Fox both have an amazing cast of players around them, and they both have their right-hand man, with Lillard obviously having Giannis and Fox obviously having Sabonis. But if you look at the Bucks, there's a reason why they are one of the top seeds in the Eastern Conference, and I understand Dame is a key part in that, but it's also mainly Giannis. Whereas De'Aaron Fox, on the other hand, obviously Sabonis is a huge piece into their success, but De'Aaron Fox is the number one guy on the Sacramento Kings. So I guess it's kind of up to you guys to decide, would you rather have the number two guy on an amazing team or the number one guy on a super good team? I'll let you guys argue that down in the comments below. But even though I have dick sucked De'Aaron Fox this entire video, there are still things that he needs to work on and things that I think are the reason as to why he doesn't get any recognition recognition at all starting with his playoff success something that we are yet to see from the Sacramento Kings they made the playoffs once they lost in the first round as a team that hasn't made the playoffs in 16 years that is impressive but as a contending team with high hopes and high expectations that is nothing at all it is really crazy though that there are some players on this current MVP ladder that haven't even sniffed the playoffs yet anyways I think that this year could be a good year for De'Aaron Fox and the Sacramento Kings if they do make the second round or the Western Conference Finals or however it goes they will probably get a lot more recognition recognition as a solid contending team instead of a team that got lucky and was healthy for a season and made the playoffs. But the one thing that I believe is holding De'Aaron Fox back the most is his free throw percentage. As a player who still centers their game around driving into the paint and attacking the basket, this man cannot have a free throw percentage less than 75%. And ladies and gentlemen, he is currently shooting 72% from the free throw line. I just think being a player who attacks the basket so much, you should be a better free throw shooter. And I hope that this is something he works on more throughout the season and throughout the offseason along with his three-point shooting because I mean hey I understand Joel Embiid is averaging like three or four more free throws than De'Aaron Fox but Joel Embiid averages a lot more than 74% from the line so with all that being said I still believe that De'Aaron Fox should be recognized as a star in the NBA the same way everyone talks about Shea Gilgis Alexander Tyrese Halliburton Luka Doncic I do not care he is a young rising if not already a star but also happy new year's to anyone watching this as this should be uploaded on January first comment down below your opinions on De'Aaron Fox do you think he's an underrated star do you think he's properly rated what do you think I want to hear everything you have to say and also while you're down there be sure to subscribe because this year is going to be crazy and I'll be uploading NBA content or basketball content all year so yeah I'll see you guys all in the next one later